Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. And I want to introduce you to an amazing guest today. Now, usually we have Amazon experts, we have PPC experts, we have marketing experts, we have all this stuff. But I'm finding it really, really important lately to get into the inter the inner entrepreneur, right? The, our inner selves. Like, how can we run a business, take care of our responsibilities, take care of our families, take care of ourselves, take care of our bottom line, if we're not really caring for our soul and we're not leading ourselves. See, entrepreneurship can be so lonely. It can be very isolating. Uh, there's people that don't understand what we're doing, how we're doing it, what we're doing. We don't have a boss to to relate to every single day, to go and ask, hey, what are my duties? What are my tasks? We, some of us have a teams or we have a couple of people that, that work with us. But other than that, we are the boss. We are self-motivating, self-regulating, self-everything. So the best thing that we can do is take care of ourselves, right? And now this is not some woo-woo, foo-foo stuff. It is real, genuine entrepreneurship from a holistic approach. That's really what I'm calling it. You have to take care of your body, your, your health, your mental health, your everything else. And the lady that I have on today is fantastic. Her name is Monica Marie Jones. I met her through our Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program. And I was immediately drawn to her from her, her communication style, for her authenticity, for her, um, her boldness in communication. She's a fantastic leader and a fantastic personal development expert. And so I really wanted to bring her on here because she was talking about her soul journey. And I found this so amazing, whether you're spiritual or not, we are all spiritual beings, no matter what you choose to believe in and what your belief systems are. I'm not going to push that on anybody. You guys know that I'm a God girl, that I'm a follower of Jesus, and that's what I do. But I also really believe in empowering in bringing everything to use to our advantage. God created creation and nature and our, our emotions and our physical bodies and all of these things and to care well for them. However you do that, I think is really, really important. So Monica is going to come on today and talk to us about how we lead ourselves, how we care for ourselves, and basically care for your soul. Because guess what? If you're caring for your body, your mind, and your spirit, everything else will do better you will do better. It will fall into place. You will be more aware and have more clarity on your business decisions. I mean, let's be real. We're not operating very well. If we are burned out, constantly facing decision after decision after decision, even from down to the, the clothes that we put on every day, right? We have constant decisions to make. Decision fatigue is real. Caring for your body, caring for your health, caring for your soul, is really, really important. So we're going to talk about leading ourselves today, and I would love to welcome Monica Marie Jones to the show. Monica, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for joining us on the Amazon Files. Yes, I am so glad to be here. Okay, so just as a brief overview to let everybody know, we met in our 10,000 small businesses program, Goldman Sachs graduates, woohoo! Um, and I was immediately drawn to your energy and your um, communication style. I knew that you had confidence, but also a humble spirit to be, we were all there to learn, right? So um, I'm so glad to have met you and crossed your paths. I feel like we're going to be friends for life. Um, and thank you for coming on and giving us your time today. It is an honor, honey. I love getting to spend more time with you. Oh, that's so sweet. So tell me a little bit about your business. How did you get started? How did you become the amazing uh, entrepreneur that you are today? Yeah, so it was actually like a journey of just following the next logical step. So I thought I wanted to be a teacher. So I started off as an elementary school teacher because I always had just naturally had this knack for helping people play in school, all the things when I was young. But then I realized I wanted to make more of an impact than I could within the confines of school districts. So I said, well, let me go back to school for social work. And I did some work in the community in the same after school program I was in, but I found that I was too emotionally attached to trying to save the world. <laughs> so I said, how can I say, take a step back and still make a difference, but not be, you know, trying to save everyone and solve every problem. So that's what led me into doing training and consulting. So professional development. 
So I was able to help the adults that worked with young people to make sure they had the skills they needed. And over the years, as I worked with more adults, I realized, hey, adults need a little bit of extra support. People would always want to pull me to the side, have coffee, you know, share some thoughts. And that's what helped me to pivot into being a personal executive coach. I realized adults need someone, especially adults who are leaders, to hold that space for them because they're always giving and pouring out and helping so many others. I love that. I and mean, we we both have experienced this before, right? And I know everyone that's listening has has had that point where, you know, leaders need to be led as well. Just because, you know, you're an entrepreneur and you're probably a natural go-getter and a natural uh, someone that can kind of take the lead, our cups get empty as well. And so we need to someone, someone or a group of someone's pouring into us. And, and sometimes it really just sell, uh, starts with that self-motivation, right? Of I need someone or, or uh, awareness. I need someone to lead me even though I'm a strong leader. So for the people in the back, just remember that, listen to that. We all experience burnout and sometimes we just don't know what to do on our own. Um, so what do you have your own personal mentor or a group of people that you lean on to help lead you as well? Oh, absolutely. In everything I've done in life, I've always tried to find the person who was like aligned who had done that before me. So there was a part of my journey where I was writing books. And so I joined the local writers network and a, a, an author who had published many books. And I just, I was just like service. I volunteered for everything just so I could sit at her feet and get the, you know, all of the wisdom and the knowledge. And throughout life, whatever I decided to try out, I always tried to find some sort of mentor and not just how can you help me, but how can I serve and help you? So it was always a reciprocal relationship. Now, as my business started to grow, I realized it was time to invest in higher level things like coaching programs, coaches, a therapist, mm. and most valuable thing, like you said, you know, having that community uh, about five years ago, some friends and I who have similar businesses, a therapist, a business coach, we formed a mastermind group. So every Thursday morning, without fail, some of us are in other countries at times, other time zones, we get on the phone and we share our wins, we talk through challenges, and we just have different topics of discussions that not only help us go grow professionally, but also help us with the personal things we're going through. I love that. I actually, it's funny that you say that too, because recently, I want to say it's been two years now, I joined a, a mastermind as well. The people from all different businesses, different walks of life, and every Tuesday without fail, we all jump on and we talk about these things. We're talking about, are we going to meet the payroll? We're talking about having had a client in 30 days, had talking about all of the hard things that I think most people aren't discussing. You know, Instagram and all the different social medias are all our highlight reels. Deals, right but this is us being authentic and telling people for sure that even us as strong women business leaders we need each other and we need to be led as well as lead our other people i mean how can we pour from an empty cup so you know this is so important that you mentioned the mastermind group because i have another a similar thing and i just absolutely love these ladies and they were stranger one of the ladies i knew but everyone else was strangers and now we cannot wait to get together to see each other we were hearing not just about each other's businesses but also you know sometimes it shifts in the hot seat and someone needs more support than others so i love to hear that you're in a mastermind as well being with like my people because y'all let's just be real sometimes our spouses they don't understand what we're going through sometimes our friends they don't know what we're doing in business they don't understand that every single day we probably have to make at least a hundred decisions and we're not talking about what kind of creamer do we want in our coffee we're talking about big decisions decisions to either hire or fire decisions to um, launch a product or not launch a product or join something or go on a retreat or any of these things spending big dollars these are hard decisions that really do take a lot out of us. And I think um, going through those things, we need people that can relate to what we're going through. So tell me a little bit, you have this, you're called your soul journey. I really wanna lean into this and you have you tell us a little bit about what that means for you. Yeah, so I went through all the things they say you're supposed to go to, you know, go to school, get good grades, go to college, get the degrees. So I did all those things, get a good job, but I still was feeling stuck. And I realized there were certain mindsets that were holding me back. For example, no matter how much money I made, I still somehow never ended up having any money. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, 
happening. We think, oh, more money is the answer. But I realized there were some real mindset shifts I needed to make if I wanted to see, you know, my goals and the changes and the growth that I wanted in my life. So I sat myself down one day and kind of took myself through a process. And it actually started with uh, the book, um, The Richest Man in Babylon. Mm. And it's kind of like a parable, but it has these kind of key things. And I'm like, you know what? Instead of just reading these books for inspiration, let me practically apply what I'm learning. Mm. And I sat down and I was like, writing out my expenses. And I took myself through what I call a soul journey, like a program where I assessed where I was. I call that reveal. Then I use, I created some things to guide my journey. I call that deal. So things like my own personal core values, my personal mission, my personal vision statements. And then the third component was heal. So it's like, mm -hmm. now that you've assessed where you are and where you want to go, you have these tenants that help to guide you how will you maintain this? And that's where it's all about like focusing on an abundance mindset, having what I call a soul journey map. So continuing to revisit your goals and action steps and what I call curating your community. So having that mastermind, that group, those like-minded people who can hold you accountable. And there's that reciprocal energy of, you know, when you're dealing with those hard business things, you said there are people who can relate. So it's interesting. because There's also kind of a letting go in that where you have friends who used to be like all the fun, but you have to release them with love to spend that time with, you know, the five people you spend the most time with, they say is, you know, that's who you are. That's the average. I love that you just said that because, you know, so many people are scared to just say that out loud, right? Just because you have a friend that's a good friend or someone that's been with you a time, you know, some of, some of us are so loyal to the core that we have a hard time cutting off relationships. And I don't mean anything that's toxic. I just mean things that are like, you know, relationships and friends and colleagues and people that we relate to, they're, they're meant to come and go. Not everybody is comes and stays for a time. It's a season. And it's okay. I'm just giving all of y'all permission right now. It's okay to have a friend or have a, a relationship for a season. You know, we, we, yeah. we sometimes walk into somebody's season of life and it's okay to let that person go if it's no longer serving you or them or both. And uh, that doesn't mean that that's easy. I love the reveal and deal and heal, right? Because we do have to deal with it. A lot of times people shove it under the rug and the rug just keeps piling up and they don't actually deal with what's causing them the issues. Now, I know we're not going to sit here and talk about how old we are. All right. You know, we know that, but at what, did you really reach an age where you decided? Cause I know this happened for me. Did you reach an age where you realize that like you're done with some of the BS and it's just okay to let go. Cause these are just holding me back. Like, I feel like I arrived at a certain age, a little late thirties, maybe 40. And I was like, you know, I'm too old for some of this and it's just gotta go. Um, did you ever experience that in your life? Absolutely. And they, you know, I remember before I was those ages, people would say there's like a switch that flips after you turn 40. And it was right. Like as I was easing in like 38, 39 and into 40, that's when I just started really changing things. And one big shift happened around expectations that I had for people. You know, I'll use an example. My boyfriend and my father I had all these expectations of what a boyfriend and a father was supposed to be, maybe based on what I saw on TV. I don't know but it always caused me so much pain. But there was some shift that happened there that said, you know what, they are who they are. And if you are, you know, if you accept them for who you are and release all these expectations, that's gonna give you freedom. And that's exactly what happened. And so I just kind of focused on what I could control, what I could change and grow, which was me, instead of all these programs and assignments, I put on all these other things mm. in my life. And so that's where the shift happened, like between 38 and crossing over the line of 40. Yes. And, you know, a lot of people get so scared of 40. I embraced it with a big hug. I was like, I'm ready to leave. I don't know my youth behind. I'm ready to to embrace wisdom and uh, growth and change. And I welcome it. No, it doesn't mean it doesn't scare me. I'm going to be honest. I'll be sitting crying in the corner with my blankie sometimes. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm giving I, I gave it a big hug because it, it brought the freedom I was 
was looking for, I think so many years, you know, as a leader and as a coach. And, and like you said earlier, when you're talking about social work, I know we, we tend to be cut from the same cloth there of like, we could and would, if we could help everybody and solve all the problems and have everybody have peace and harmony. Um, but we realize that we're created for a, a very specific purpose sometimes. And we, we wander around until we find that. I would help everybody as well. But as I approach these ages, I realize I'm not meant to. I don't have to carry that weight for everyone. I just have to do what's best for me and what's best for the people that I serve and serve them really well. It doesn't have to be the world. There's plenty. There's billions of people on the planet and you can't serve everyone. So serve your people really, really well. So I love that we share that idea of like, once you get 40, y'all, if you're in 40 yet, just wait, just wait. And when and remember this conversation we had, we fully release you into embracing your freedom of saying, you know what? I don't have to care about every little thing and every little opinion and you know sometimes i say if your opinion's not right in my check it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah yep. and that's the biggest gift i think you know all the cares you used to give about everything people think and what you know it's like those just start to fly out the window <laughs> they do it's almost magical i swear it's like you just you turn a corner in a certain age and you just realize I don't have to care about that. I don't have to let that occupy space in my mind anymore. Actually doesn't really matter in the long-term scheme of things, your priorities starting to shift. So we're gonna assume we're talking to all the, most of our audiences about our age or you know maybe a little bit older. So shifting back into that business leadership, um, as we are letting go of these things that we don't have to care about anymore, what we do wanna care about is growing personally, think, uh, focusing on the things that we can control and change about ourselves. And you have this thing called the My mind quest journey right um that's your your program uh and talking about that reveal and deal and heal i love that so tell us a little bit more about how that came about why did you decide to create this program which y'all i've taken the program and it's fantastic by the way i love the worksheets and the checklists and the the actual you know me y'all fit pens papers sticky notes everything so um monica has covered all of that and i absolutely just love this training it really helps you reshape your mind into what you're doing so how did that come about what, what made you decide that that was such a need which it is yeah so it was actually i took that process i took myself through and then i said oh it worked like literally once i did that I, you know, released the things that were no longer serving me, focused on the things that matter, continue to do the inner healing work. That's when I saw all the things that I wanted to happen. So my money grew, my joy grew, like all the things I wanted to attract started coming my way. So I was my first case study. Mm -hmm. And then as I continued to do trainings and professional development around the country, it's almost like people saw a, a light or something in me. And women would come up to me afterward and say, can we meet for coffee? And they'd be like, you know, I'm going through a transition. I'm feeling stuck. And I'm like, hmm, I got something for that. So I started with five women, tested it out on them. And then boom, like their careers, their lives, their businesses, everything just took off. And so I just kept growing and growing from there. And I turned it into a, you know, a solidified approach, the mindset quest or the soul journey. And I started doing it with one-on-one -on -one clients and then with group coaching. And again, all of the rewards, all of the testimonials. So I said, well, I can only be in so many places and work with some people. So let me take that same approach and turn it into a course. That way, if people want to access it in a self-guided way or in a way that's more accessible, for their budget they can just go through and take their time with the videos and the worksheets and the activities but have the same experience yeah i gotta tell you the experience is you guys it's just out of this world and now of course we're going to give you links and everything to it i highly recommend it i don't um i i'm very limited in time so i'm very limited on the programs that i choose to invest in and i'm telling you guys this training isn't that long but it will transform your mind it will help you heal and deal with some of the stuff some of the stuff you didn't even realize that you were holding yourself back from. I mean, the abundance mindset, right? Let's talk about marketing for just a second, because I know we just learned, we got the whole what for and how to about marketing, did we not in our program? And so we're all scrambling to move it around. But the reality with marketing is that they they've taught us and shoved it down our throats for years and years that scarcity that, that there's scarcity right that we don't have and if you've grown up you know at all depending on your upbringing uh, i grew up in a single parent family where it was things were scarce food was scarce money was scarce um we grew up in a poverty situation 
And when it's really hard to kind of shake some of those mindsets off your parents did the best they could i always kind of give props to parents they did the best they could uh, with what they had and i'm not blaming my parents just the way that my dad raised me money was something that was just like he was always one of those be content with what you have um you know always be generous which is great and i've accepted that but he was a very very simple um man he was very satisfied with very little and that was fine um and also kind of frowned upon having too much he just always thought that that would cause problems but i'm always the one that says you don't have to subscribe to what you were born with you do not have to subscribe you are an adult and you can unsubscribe to any thoughts and beliefs anytime you choose that aren't going to be serving you and that's something that i grew up with more of an abundance i saw wealth and prosperity as something that could be everywhere it could be everywhere. And I was kind of taught that it was very, it was for a select few. And if you follow the path, like you were talking about, go to college, get a good job, get a PhD, get a this and that, then you'll never struggle. And let me be, let me be frank. That is just not the, the case. Nowadays, there's so many more opportunities for abundance. And so even if you only take away the abundance mentality from that, there really is enough for everyone. It's just about going to get your peace, right? <laughs> Yeah. And that, that was the real shift that had to happen. Cause just like you poverty grew up, you know, sometimes we didn't have electricity or we didn't have hot water and I had to go to school and pretend like everything was okay. So mm. that, even though that wasn't my life anymore, that was still embedded in my programming, in my brain. So when I did get money, it was like, Oh, let me hurry up and get rid of it before, you know, it gets taken away or somebody asked for it. Or, you know, it was like, literally I was just trying to, I don't know. It's like you're trying to reset to what was comfortable. So I had to, and I still have to undo that. So like as a business owner, making sure you're charging your worth and your value instead of dollars for hours or, oh, can people afford it? Mm -hmm. Those people get to make their choices and their decisions and there's value in them doing what they need to be able to make the investment. We can't be in their pockets counting their money. They are not the mm -hmm. old poverty us, but that's the place sometimes we are operating from. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like an all, just like healing. Like there's never I am healed. It's like it's an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. Same with the abundance mindset. You have I, I love the affirmations and the reading and even when I lead workshops, I call it manifest and manage your money that I do in the community. Um, it's a constant reminder because sometimes you can just fall right back into that mindset and, and that that feeling of happiness is just always outside my grasp where there's not enough for, mm -hmm. no, there's enough for everything, so. I love that. And just continuing on with the abundance, there's also an abundance of information and help and mentorship and support out there. I think it's just being humble enough and being vulnerable enough. And that's something I loved right away about you as well as being vulnerable enough to be a leader, but also be a student and lean in and say, I always have more to learn. And I always, you know, surrounding yourself by, uh, with a bunch of different people that have different viewpoints and different upbringings than you is such an amazing thing. And I loved just getting to know you and watching you lean into that, you know, cause I could tell right away you were a strong leader, but at the same time, always leaning in, always learning, always seeing what you can receive as well as give. And I think that's such an important part of leadership. So as our listeners are kind of leaning more into this, what is one piece of advice you would have for them when it comes to both their leadership and their ability to uh, receive uh, instruction? Yeah. So what you shared made me think about one of my, something that's like at the core of my business, the culture of my company, and that's being human and healing centered. I think when we become leaders, we feel like we, we have to look perfect and be strong and not make mistakes and not let anyone see us cry. But there's so much power in modeling vulnerability and your humanness. So like you said, I would come in confident in that class and be speaking. And then a couple of weeks later, you see me bust out crying in front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> because I was, you know, struggling with something I was trying to learn. So when we are our whole authentic selves in our leadership, it gives other people permission to do the same. Mm -hmm. And that is when you're going to see their true potential, their true passion. Otherwise, everyone's walking around on eggshells trying to be perfect. And you never get the fullness of the experience of each person and their potential. I love 
how you framed that because I think it's so true, especially on on Instagram, on every every social media platform out there. I always say Instagram because that's like my go to. But uh, honestly, people are always posting those highlight reels and all these different things and, and different stuff. And I got a post coming up. I know it's scheduled, y'all. You haven't seen it yet. But um, talking about, you know, people are always posting their wins and this and that. I actually am posting a loss and I'm just going to show something on there that says, look, it takes courage to come in last as well. It takes courage to just show up. It takes courage to come in last, even if you're doing your best. And it's not always sunshines and rainbows. And we want to put our best foot forward. Of course, we want to show up with excellence and we want to uh, do our work with um the best that we the best of our abilities and bring our skills to the table we also have to be authentic enough to say i don't know everything i don't have it all together and it makes us feel more human as well when people are looking yeah. and watching their leaders you they want to know that you two screw up because the kid in the back of the class whether it's i say kid we're all teaching 40 year olds up in here but like the person in the back of the class they really are saying gosh i'm a mess i don't have it all together i still still have so much to learn and when they see that in us as leaders they kind of breathe a sigh of relief oh you mean miss jones is actually normal and she cries too yes yes we do <laughs> so i just love i love that that we share that um ability to to kind of just be real and be vulnerable because that's a place where leadership comes from the ability to be aware that we make mistakes and how do we fix them and how do we problem solve and how do we um come together as a community and help each other you know we can't always hold ourselves up. <laughs> yeah, that makes me think of something I read recently where it's like, if you create this culture of like no mistakes and perfection, mm. when people help, they don't say anything. So then they end up making more mistakes because they're afraid like to get in trouble. So it's like, you want that continuous culture of growth and openness and communication, you know, to really be able to offer a high quality product or service. Okay, so let's talk, let's shift a little bit into the loneliness of entrepreneurship. And as um, most of my audience is probably sitting alone and leading themselves and leading their businesses, may not even have a team yet, um, what is something they can tap into to kind of lead themselves as they're making these hard decisions and kind of working through the loneliness of entrepreneurship? Mm, that is something that you know, again, I put as a part of my approach and a part of the course where I talk about curating your community. It doesn't have to be a big community, but whether it's online, whether it's in person, or sometimes for me, it's listening to a really good podcast. Mm -hmm. Like there's something about a podcast where it feels like you're on the phone with a friend. And I realized that when I started buying everything my favorite podcasters were advertising, <laughs> in my mind, I'm just listening to advice from a friend. So community doesn't always have to look like what we think it does. Like finding your people could be that one accountability buddy is what I like to call it, mm -hmm. that one person. It can be the things you listen to, the things you read, and then I would say intentionally forming relationships with people who are aligned with your values, your vision, your mission. No need to rush. No need to go to all the networking events and meet all the people because that ends up, again, just taking more energy. Mm. That intentionality of the small things I do, you know, independently or the small things I do with the small group of people adds so much more value than the quantity. Um, so... Yes. I love that. Another thing I'm going to reveal is, although uh, Monica is very, um, she's an amazing communicator and a leader, but she's also an introvert. So I thought that was really an interesting thing because some uh, some people, introverts are, are very uh, mistaken sometimes. And just because they might be outspoken or um, an excellent communicator, excellent teacher or leader does not mean that you always like to be around all the people all the time. So I love how you brought the podcast into that, is that your community you need people. I'm just going to be honest. Everybody needs somebody, but you don't have to have this large networking group. I know that idea makes some people run for the hills. They're like, walk into a room of strangers that I don't know and talk about my business. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to Starbucks, right? Um, but it doesn't have to be a large community, like Monica said. But but thinking about that, being alone with yourself in a podcast or a therapist, let's just not glaze over that. We are just yep. too old to be worried about how therapy is for messed up people. Y'all, we're all messed up people. 
Let's just let's just put that on the table. We all need someone to talk to, a therapist, somebody you can literally say anything to, almost like attorney-client privilege. Look at me, can't even talk. Um, you're thinking about that is the fact that it's a safe place that no matter what happens, you can talk to someone. So whether your network, your community involves a pastor, a spiritual leader, a a mastermind group of very small people, we cannot be good strong business owners if we don't have people supporting us it doesn't mean it has to be a hundred people but it needs to be somebody somewhere and it, even that podcast in your ear being consistent about how you lead yourself into greatness because greatness isn't an accident you see these people on instagram or their podcast or your people like me and monica here building businesses this doesn't happen by accident it happens by intent by constantly making ourselves uncomfortable by reaching out to people we don't know very well and just going head in because we want to learn it's okay to be greedy about your growth that's all i have to say about that <laughs> love that and you know when i you know well when i didn't believe i had the budget to invest in a therapist and a coach and bigger programs, I would literally walk around a park in Detroit called Belle Isle, and it's a six mile radius if you walk around. So that would take me two hours and one whole summer. Every day I did that and listened to podcasts and those podcasts changed my life and they helped to coach me to the next level of my growth. So yeah, for now you may have a virtual community that, mm -hmm. you know, you can't talk back to, but they can be pouring into you. That is such amazing advice. And I love that commitment level because no matter wh whether you're walking around Belle Isle, which is a great idea, by the way, <laughs> um, or you're just walking around your neighborhood or in the shower listening to um, those podcasts that really, really help you there. Okay, so guys, we're wrapping up here. Um, Tell us a little bit more about your business, about who you serve, how you serve, and then we're going to give that link to uh, the Mindset Quest because I really think you guys investing in this program is going to change you. It's going to open your mind to some of the stuff you've been holding yourself back from, and we need to admit that and be aware of that so we can move forward. So a little bit about your business and who you serve and how, and then we'll talk about the course. Absolutely. So my overall business, Inspirationista Inc., is about personal and professional development. And so my three major pillars with that are the one-on-one -on -one executive coaching for leaders in business and nonprofits, the group coaching to make sure people can come together and have that community. And then I also host retreats, both locally, mm -hmm. nationally, and internationally. Every year, I do a restoration for leaders retreat in Morocco and actually next year, I'm going to do four of them so that they won't all be sold out mm -hmm. and people have access to getting away, getting healthy food, healthy community, and being around like-minded leaders. And the other piece sometimes I do is just overall professional development for companies and organizations. So if you need that team building retreat or you need that retreat for your advisory board or board of directors, I just take people through a journey to help them continue to grow their skills as leaders or members of teams. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that, you guys. I will tell you this, um, you, all the links are gonna be below this video and in all of the socials so that you can uh, reach out to Monica. Let me tell you, just spending the last 14 weeks with her in a smaller capacity, um, my life has just changed in, in that space in that aspect, just knowing uh, Monica and what she has done and how she's transforming people in the world is, is such a privilege for me to have known her and worked with her. And the course, the mindset journey is really a mindset quest. I keep calling it journey because of the soul journey. <laughs> I'm like missing, mixing up all this stuff. Honestly, you guys, this, this course is not very long, but it is something worthy of your investment of your time. Your time is worth this. Your mind and your soul is going to be affected by this course. So really you guys, underneath this video, there's going to be a link and I want you to click on that link so that you can take the course. Also, it is um, mommyincome.com forward slash mind quest. That is the way that you can get to uh, Monica's course. And let me just say that as entrepreneurs, you guys are all working in your businesses. You're working really hard. Most of you are working alone. And this is something you need to invest in for yourself. If you don't have a therapist, a coach, a mentor, then this might be a stepping stone. If you're an introvert and you're like, I don't wanna get on a Zoom call and talk to somebody cause that's scary and I have to show my face on camera. Yeah, we understand, um, you know, cause we don't like the camera or anything at all, right? <laughs> 
us podcast hosts. Um, no, seriously though, you guys, just because you might be an introvert or it's not something that you're forward facing, you need leadership. You need to lead yourself. You need to continually grow. Otherwise, you're just kind of going around the same mountain, right? You're just walking around, walking around, hoping things will change. If you're not intentional, sorry. It's not going to work. It's not going to change. Um, so Monica, thank you so much for your time, for your expertise, and for just pouring into my life that the way that you have, I am forever indebted to you. Um, what is the best link for everybody to reach out and what platform or link that they can come and find you and follow you? you guys follow for sure. She does these daily lives and she's always inspiring us. Uh, you don't want to miss out. Yeah, so MonicaMarieJones.com will take everywhere or simply Googling Monica Marie Jones. I'm on all platforms. And if you are somebody who likes to get into the videos and listen, I do little videos. And I actually just did one about what you said with the unsubscribing from things mm. that are no longer serving you. So if you need that quick 90 second bite of inspiration, that's going to be there for you on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and now TikTok. Yes. Oh, we're, we're moving up, huh? looking at all the social platforms. Well, again, thank you so much, you guys. I know you could be any other place doing any other thing, listening to any other podcast. I don't take that for granted. Thank you so much for your time, for your energy. Please go to monicamariejones.com or mommyincome.com forward slash uh, mindquest and get your course. You guys, it will change your life and we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.